Hi, this video is going to cover how to calculate the area and the perimeter of composite figures. So the learning goal for this video is to just basically learn some strategies for uh, calculating the area and the perimeter of these composite figures, like this face here. Um, uh, this is a composite figure, and you'll see why in a second. Um, hopefully by the end of the video, your face doesn't look like this, it looks more like, looks more like that. Let's hope. So the composite figure is essentially just a figure that's made up of two or more shapes. Like this one over here. We've got a square and a triangle. Um, so if we are asked to find out the total area of this entire figure, well, uh, the easiest way to do that is, well, uh, we're going to calculate the area of the square, calculate the area of the um, triangle, and then we just add them together. So it's just basically the area of the square plus the area of the triangle. Okay, So um, we're going to um, do the calculation separately and then add them together at the end. I think that's an easy way to do it. Um, if you want to get a, a copy of a formula sheet that has uh, formulas for the area uh, and perimeter of shapes, uh, you can scan the QR code. It'll take you to this eqao.com website. Um, or you can type that um, address in a browser. All right, um, so let's go ahead and split up the calculation. Let's find the area of the square first. Okay. Uh, so this square, uh, the area, okay, according to a formula sheet, is uh, length times width. It's just a rectangle. It's just a special rectangle uh, where all the sides are the same. right? So the area here is just length times width, which both happen to be 10. So we're just going to replace L with 10 and the width with 10. Okay, so 10 times 10 gives you 100, and this is in centimeters squared. So that's the area of this square. We're going to now find the area of the triangle, and then we're going to put the two together. Okay, so let's find the area of the triangle. Now the formula for that, the area is equal to base times height divided by 2. So the base is this length here, okay, and the height um, is the 5 centimeters here. Okay? So the base here is 10. We're going to put that in brackets. The uh, H is uh, 5. And then we're going to divide by 2. Uh, 10 times 5 is 50. And then divided by 2 is 25 square centimeters. So now we're just going to put the two together. Okay? So um, the total area here okay, is, again, the area of this square plus the area of this triangle. So we're going to just add um, the 100 okay, plus the 25 for the triangle, and then we're just going to get 125 centimeters squared. Well, let's do another example. Um, here we have a different type of composite figure. Uh, we have um, a rectangle with a hole cut out of it, essentially. So if we want to calculate the area of uh, the shaded part here, um, all we're going to do is we're going to calculate the area of the rectangle, okay? which basically tells us how much space is inside the whole thing. Okay? And then we're going to calculate the area of this hole, and then we're just going to subtract it or take it out of the area of the rectangle. Okay? So that's the strategy for a composite figure like this, uh, where um, you know, one shape is cutting into another one. So let's find the area of the uh, rectangle first. So the area of a rectangle is again length times width. So the length is 15, let's say, and the width is 20, right? So length is 15 and the width is 20. So multiply those, you'll get 300 square centimeters. Okay, let's find the area of this circle. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. Um, we could turn pi into 3.14 if you wanted to, but uh, let's just be as precise as possible. We'll keep pi as pi. Um, the radius of the circle isn't 8, because that's really the diameter, right? The radius is from the middle of the circle to the end. So in this case, it's 4 centimeters. So 
we're going to turn r into 4. Okay. So 4 squared, we have to do the exponents first, so that's 16. So let's just do pi times 16 on our calculator here. Whoops. So uh, pi times 16. And well, what do you know? I, I did the calculation beforehand. So 50.27, let's say. Okay. 50.27 square centimeters. All right, so now we're going to... Uh, take the circle out of the area of the um, rectangle. Okay, so the total area here okay, of the shaded part is the area of the rectangle subtract the area of the circle because again the circle is cutting uh, 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 there's a circle cut out of the rectangle. Okay? So we're going to cut it out, we're going to subtract it out. So 300 minus 50.27 okay so let's just get our calculator here 300 take away 50.27 okay so 249.73 9.73 square centimeters okay so we we've, we've just seen two different types of composite figures so let's just kind of sum things up a little bit. Um, if the composite figure is made up of two or more shapes added or stuck together, like in the first example, right, then we're going to add uh, the areas of the individual shapes. Now the second example, if a composite figure is made up of a shape cut out of another, then we're going to subtract the areas of the shapes. Um, and again, here it may be helpful to calculate the individual shapes separately and then add or subtract them. All right, so let's see um, uh, if you can apply the success criteria here. Um, I'd like you to calculate the area of this composite figure. It's a little bit tough, um, but let's see if you can do it. Remember, this is um, a semicircle. All right. So you know how to find the area of a circle. Uh, so you're going to have to alter that to find the area of the circle. And this shape down here is a trapezoid. So let's see if you can apply the success criteria. Okay? And um, why don't you pause the video now, give this question a try, and then when you're ready, um, we'll take up the answer. Okay, so let's uh, calculate each uh, shape separately. Um, and then we're going to add these two together, right? Because these uh, shapes are stuck together or fused together. So let's do the uh, semicircle first. All right, so a semicircle is just half of a circle. So a regular circle has an area of pi times the radius squared. But again, because this is half of a circle, okay, we're going to divide it by 2. So again, this divided by two part here is for half the circle, right? For half a circle. Right. So let's keep pi as pi. The radius here is again from the middle of the circle to the edge. So if the diameter is two, then the radius has to be half of that. So the radius is one squared and then divided by two. Now, 1 squared is just 1, so 1 times pi is pi. So um, we're just going to do pi divided by 2. So here we get 1.57. Okay, let's just round it. So 1.57 square meters. Uh, let's uh, now calculate the area of this shape down here, the trapezoid. Now, the area of a trapezoid is just um, a, no, wait a oh boy, blanking out a plus b times h. Oops. Okay, now yeah, let's back it up. All right, so now we're going to find the area of the trapezoid. So the area of a trapezoid is a plus b times h divided by 2. So 
A and B are just the lengths of the two sides that are uh, parallel to each other. So that's 1 and 2. So let's just replace every single letter here with a uh, length or a, a value. The height of this trapezoid is 0 0.75. And then we're going to divide that by 2. Um, so 1 plus 2 is 3. So this is 3 times 0 0.75 divided by 2. So 3 times 0 0.75 divided by 2, and we get 1.125. 1 1.125 square meters. Um, so now all we need to do is we're going to add the two together. Right? So the total area here, okay? so the total area is equal to the area of the semicircle. <laughs> plus the area of the trapezoid. Well, my pictures are awesome. So the area of the semicircle was 1.57, and the area of the trapezoid was 1.125. I'm just going to add those two together. So 1.125 plus 1.57, and we get 2.695. 2.695 meters squared. All right. So again. We identified the two shapes. We're going to uh, we we calculated the area of both shapes and then just added them together. Okay, so just be careful about the measurements, right? For instance, the diameter versus the radius. Okay, you got to be careful about that. All right, let's try one more. Um, here we're going to be asked uh, about the perimeter. Okay, so if we're going to um, uh, calculate the perimeter here, it's a little bit different. Okay, we don't calculate the perimeter of both figures. Okay, simply because, well, um, uh, the perimeter of, let's say, this rectangle here okay, is all the way around. But you notice that this dotted line here is not part of the perimeter, right? This part here, right? Oops. Okay, that's not part of the perimeter. Now, because remember, the perimeter just means the uh, length of the outside and this dotted line is not part of the outside. So um, what, what I suggest that you do is um, highlight right, the outside of a figure if you're asked to calculate the perimeter. So I'm just going to highlight it all in purple and it doesn't matter if it's sloppy. So this is the outside. Okay, so we need to know, oh, that's great, all the different parts along the outside. Um, so I can tell that this part, okay, if I start here, okay, I'm going to put a little star here. If I start here in this corner, uh, this part is 7, this part is 20, this part 7, this part here is 10, and then I don't really know how long this curved part is. So I need to figure out what that is. Um, uh, this is just a uh, the outside of a semicircle. All right? So uh, we need to calculate the perimeter of that uh, outside. Okay, so remember, uh, if you look in your formula sheet, the circumference of a circle can be written as pi times the diameter. Now, because this is a semicircle, all right, again, we're going to cut that in half okay, because we're just dealing with half of a circle. Um, so, pi and the diameter of the semicircle is 10. Divided by 2. So um, we can just do 10 times pi divided by 2. And we get 15.7, let's say 15.7 meters. So to calculate the perimeter of the whole thing, okay, we're just going to add every single piece together okay, along the outside that we highlighted. So we got 7, oh, hang on, let's say so. Total perimeter, P, we've got 7 plus, hang on, so we got that 7, we're going to add that 20, we're going to add this 7 over here, we're going to add this piece, which is 10, over here, and then we're going to add this curved part, which we just found out was 15.7, okay, so the total perimeter here, let's just add it all up, so we got 7 plus 20 plus 7 plus 10 plus 15. 15.7 and we get 
0.7 meters. All right. So calculating perimeter is a little bit different than calculating the area because um, here we didn't uh, calculate the perimeter of the semicircle and then calculate the perimeter of the whole rectangle and then added the two. Okay, that's not quite how it works um, because uh, they might share a, um, a, a part of a perimeter uh, that actually doesn't count as a perimeter of the larger shape. Okay, so don't fall into that trap of of um, uh, calculating the perimeters of both and just simply adding them together. It takes a little bit more thought. Okay, so highlight the outside. It helps. All right, just to sum things up. Okay, so for the area, depending on the type of the composite figure, you're going to either have to add or subtract the areas of the different shapes. So understand when you have to add and when you have to subtract. And then the perimeter, what I would suggest you do is to highlight the perimeter of the figure and then add up the different parts. Okay, and sometimes, like in the example before, you would have to calculate the um, uh, the uh, circumference of that semicircle. Okay, so hopefully this video has made things a little bit more clear about calculating the area and the perimeter of composite figures. So good luck!